Good morning, brothers and sisters. Yeah, I'm suited up today. I got some preaching to do out here in the land of the lost. Lost sheep. I was watching this video earlier where I was trying to uh, start a after school Satan club. Like, wow, really? Like, it's immoral. Like, who wants. <laughs> It's like, like the guy said, it's like, well, yeah, I don't have to research that if it's bad or good. Everybody knows Satan's bad, you idiots. That's what's wrong with this country now. What's wrong with y'all? Wake up. Hmm? Wake up and smell that folges in your cup. Huh? Hey, not on my watch. What I like to do, I like to tear down witch altars. It's of the devil. I hate the devil. I don't love the devil. Devil loves y'all though. I'm trying to get y'all away from God. <sighs> Let me get my oxygen. I got asthma. The other reason why I quit smoking besides converting to Christianity. This body is cleansed. Oh man. Y'all trying to bring that to Huntsville, Alabama, baby. Huh? Y'all trying to bring that in my town. Watch what I do to you. You want to talk about a voice? Uh, what they say? Some of that. Man, he's a big elephant in the room. My God, I am. Yeah. He got a loud mouth. By God, I do. And y'all ain't going to do nothing about it. Hallelujah. Amen. Huh. Well, let's get in it. Let's get in the word. You know. Let's go. Huh. Yeah. No problems are too big for God. Let's, let's pray. Dear Lord, when I face the inevitable disappointments of life, give me perspective and faith. When I'm discouraged, give me the strength to trust your promises and follow your will. Then, when I have done my best, Father, let me live with the assurance that you are firmly in control and that your love endures forever and ever. In the blood of the Lamb, glory be to God. Amen. Yeah, God's in control. Y'all ain't in control. Y'all in control running that mouth, ain't you? That's all about y'all about to do is just run that mouth. I'm going to keep preaching, teaching me this hood in my neighborhood, in my streets. Yeah. And when they keep coming here, I'm going to preach sound doctrine. I'm not preaching prosperity. You're talking about some give me a dollar. I ain't going to ask for none of that. If your heart is telling you to donate to the ministry, then do it. If you're skeptical about it, then just shut up, sit down, and listen to the word of God. That's all I'm going to say. No problems are too big for God. Is anything too hard for the Lord? That's Genesis 18, 14. Is it? Well, no. Here's a riddle. What is it that is too important to pray about, yet too big for God to handle? Any takers? <laughs> the answer, of course, is nothing. Yet yeah, sometimes when the challenges of the day seem overwhelming, we may spend more time worrying about our troubles than praying about them. Like, let's see, you having trouble financially? Pray about it. You got a problem with needles? Pray about it. You got a problem of being out in the streets? Pray about it. You got a problem with not finding a job? God don't want to hear nothing about it. Oh, ain't no job out there, man. They're everywhere is hiring, starting 12, 50, 14 bucks an hour. But it's like you're only making seven bucks an hour because the inflation, because your top officials that half of y'all thought was going to be, oh, he's going to save us. Uh, how do you like them gas prices, though, huh? Hmm? How you like the food shortages coming, huh? How you like that? What y'all gonna do? You gonna stand up your voice? Huh? They gonna sit there and be little cowards. 
too worried about getting high and fornicating, ain't you? Huh? Well, pray about it. It's not unanswered prayer. It's because it's an unoffered prayer because y'all don't want to pray. Y'all still trying to figure out if you got a pervenus or a vajayjay yet. Yeah. I know this, man. I'm glad I, I passed my GED and know what biology is. I know what a vagina is and I know what a penis is. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thus says the Lord. Man and woman, woman, man. It's not rocket science. It's not geometry. It's common sense. It's, man, hold on. Let me get my Bible out. Look, I want to show y'all something. Let me show y'all something. You want to know how you determine if you're a man or a woman? Hold on. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you the guidebook. <laughs> the guidebook. Here. You want to look it up? Huh? You want to look that up? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, hold on. Let me just, before y'all. Oh. Hey, all aboard and get left behind. Because many of you sound like you need deliverance. Because if not, you're going to get left behind. <laughs> oh, it is. Hold I, 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 I'm sorry, y'all. It just it, it, it irritates me uh, seeing. Pansexual, asexual, bisexual, transsexual, one sexual. Like, are y'all stupid? Are y'all idiots? <laughs> oh, I bet y'all want to vote that right in there too, don't you? Woo! <laughs> yeah. All right. Again, here's a riddle. What is it that is too unimportant to pray about yet too big for God to handle the answer of course is nothing yet sometimes when the challenges of the day seem overwhelming we may spend more time worrying about our troubles than praying about them and we may spend more time fretting about our problems than solving them a far better strategy of course is to pray as if everything depended entirely upon God and to work as if everything depended entirely upon us. Life is an exercise in problem solving. <laughs> yeah, two plus two is four, not two plus two is five. Life is an exercise in problem solving. The question is not whether we encounter problems. The real question is how we will choose to address them. When it comes to solving the problems of everyday living, we often know precisely what needs to be done. But we may be slow in doing it, especially if what needs to be done is difficult or uncomfortable for us to try. So we put off till tomorrow or put off till next week what should be done today. You, you stop putting off your giants. Be like David versus Goliath. Get you a stone and knock them down and then chop their heads off. You know? And if it's certain things, don't take it literally. Like, don't go chopping heads off because you, well, the Bible says you chop your head off. Don't be stupid. That's like, well, I don't know what I had down there. Well, well it just disappeared one day. <laughs> well, the words of Psalm 34 remind us that the Lord solves problems for people who do what is right. And usually doing what is right means doing the uncomfortable work of confronting our problems sooner rather than later. So with no further ado, let the problem solving begin. Yeah, yeah. That's what's wrong with America today. Yeah, you're trying to find yourselves. You're trying to worship yourselves. You're trying to idolize yourself. Stop it. I'll wait until I hit you with my sermon on Sunday. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. All ye that hope in the Lord. And that's Psalm 31, 24. People who do what is right may have many problems, but the Lord will solve them all. And he's coming. 
Dude, look around you. Look at all the newborn Christians that's getting visions and signs and 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 dreams of God and Jesus and the and the rapture of the church, the ap apocalyptic uh, stuff that's about to happen. And, and not just in America. This is worldwide. What you think, man? What you think, man? The devil ain't real, man. I got proof. I got video footage. You want me to show you? Come to church. I got video footage of angels. Don't believe me? Come to church. For when the way is rough, your patience has a chance to grow. So let it grow and don't try to squirm out your problems. That's James chapter 1, 3, and 4. Come to me, all <clears throat> you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble at heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And that's Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Now the next one's Isaiah 43, 2 and 3. You'll like this one. When you go through deep waters and great trouble, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you, for I am the Lord your God. Kind of reminds me when I drowned, when I did, I drowned in my papa's swimming pool. God got me back. Don't you think that wasn't a miracle? I bet many of you wish I'd drowned and died and never came back home. <laughs> I, me too. I'd, be, I'd still be in heaven. Which I'm going right back up there. I'm going to go straight to the a tip for tough times. Problem solving 101. It's kind of like when I say hustle nomics 101. Hey, Jesus Christ, 101, he's coming back. Guess what? It's real soon. Don't believe me? Look at the blood moons. Huh? Better yet, just, you know, don't even look at this, the signs and the, and the numbers in the sky and in front of your faces. How about you go in there and read it out of the Bible? When it comes to solving problems, work beats worry. Remember, it is better to fix than to fret. Just to fix it. Than to fear it. Don't have the spirit of, of fear. But you know what? I ain't scared of China. I ain't scared of Russia. I ain't. <coughs> Let's talk about it. I ain't scared of them snake bites. I can't say the other part because they censor us preachers and pastors and Christians now. Y'all don't find that amusing. You don't find that eye opening. It's a religious war going on right now as we speak. You don't see it. Huh? You don't know it? it everything that's full, foretold thousands of years ago in this holy Bible, you know, your guide of knowing if you're a man or woman is in here, and the times are short right now in the black and white. I saw we've been telling you since November last year. What I've been telling my my all my black folks and white folks that that are my family. I've been saying, get on your righteous path. Get out of your gray area of living. Get back in that black and white. I'm going to read a devotion. And then I'm going to close with a prayer. Because many of you just scroll on. You don't want sound doctrine. Uh, me and my wife cut up, cut up the devil. I'll be like, scroll on, man. Scroll on. Since you don't want, huh? What? Since you don't want to hear what? Sound doctrine? Oh, what? Oh, you want to be of the world, don't you? You'll be the first to catch the mark of the beast, ain't you? I bet you're going to take the mark of the beast. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I want to make a chip in my head. Ooh. The grand delusion of every act of sin is that we can be disloyal to God and everything will work out at the end. We all do it sometimes, and in some ways, in little and not so little moments of disloyalty to God, we work to excuse ourselves and convince ourselves that it will be all okay in the end. In private moments of moral self-conversation, we say, here, here's some tips. We say, 
Well, I can handle this. It'll be okay. I only do it one more time. Just once. Or that. I just do it once. I'll just do it one more time. It'll be all right. I got time. I won't get in a car wreck later. I ain't got to worry about that. I just, I just send a little bit. Not, not, I didn't send big. I just send little. I bet y'all believe in, in fairy tales and and unicorns, don't you? I really didn't have much of a choice. It's not really such a big deal. Other people do it all the time and they get away with it. It's not really clearly forbidden by the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E. What else could I do? I, I had no choice. I just chose the lesser of two evils. God is good. He'll forgive me. Huh. It's not like I do this all the time. I only fornicated five times in one month. It's okay. That's less than last month. I hear all y'all's excuses. But doesn't God want me to be happy? I just want to smoke one more blunt. I just want to smoke one more vein, one more cigarette. I just want to shoot up one more time. I just want to sell one more sack. I just want to sell a couple more, more pills. I got enough time. I just want to curse one more time. I just want to not make. I just want to make an excuse and not come to church one more time. I overslept. I stayed up late last night. I played too many video games. <clears throat> yeah. You get my drift yet? Each statement is designed to relieve the burden of conviction. Each is meant to mask the reality that we have chosen to be disloyal to God, rebellious to His authority, and resistant to His call. Each is meant to cover the true allegiance of our hearts. Each is designed to enable us to feel okay about what God clearly says is not okay. Each is meant to make sin look not so sinful after all. Each is meant to ease your fear that sin really is destructive and that it really does lead to death. There are moments when we are all tempted to give in <clears throat> to the delusional logic of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. See Genesis chapter 3. In the mundane moments of our daily lives, we buy into the fallacy, fallacy that we can step over God's loving and wise moral boundaries without consequences. In little moments, we're morally disloyal to the one who is our wisdom, righteousness, and hope. And what's important about this is that the character of a life isn't set in three or four big moments of life, but in 10,000 little virtually unnoticed moments in life. These acts of disloyalty expose the war that still rages for the rulership of our hearts and the depth of our ongoing need for rescuing and forgiving grace. Isn't it good to know that that grace is ours in Christ Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Do you have Jesus in your heart? Do you have Jesus in your mind? Do you have Jesus in your soul? How many sins can you let go? Me, I have let go of every sin. I transformed. If I can transform to Christianity and be a servant of our one and only maker God and his only one and begotten son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, King of kings, Lord of lords, the sovereign one, the only way and the only one that's going to get you to heaven is when you repent and ask God to forgive me of my sins. And I know he died on the cross and arose three days later. And he died for our transgressions. He died for our sins. Hmm? Sound doctrine? Sound familiar? I ain't over here preaching for no, I want a $65 million debt. 
who's that? Or who I sound who, who's a couple of them Money coming to me! I'm broke as a joke and only make it little by little. I make it I, I make it day by day. I make it to the contentment that God puts in my way. Makes my way for me. Makes my path. Put people in my way. If I need gas, help with gas money, guess what? Brothers and sisters, help. If I need help with this or if someone else needs help cutting a tree down, I get the chainsaw. Here you go. I let them borrow it or I cut it down for you. Huh? Anointing. Many of you run from this. Oh, I don't want to do no anointing. I don't want to put no holy oil on my forehead. What you're scared of? Conviction? Huh? I know this. My Redeemer lives. And he's coming back. And he will stand on earth at last. And you yourselves are in danger of what? Your own attitudes. Which means you're in danger of your own sins. Don't worry about mine. You need to worry about yourself. And know that there is judgment. And judgment is coming. And it's coming quickly. Swiftly. And fasting, and I hope and pray that y'all y'all get it right. Y'all better stop drinking. Y'all better stop smoking. Yeah, how about this? How about stop making up excuses and try it out one day? Try. How about this? I challenge you to, to try it out for one week. Try not to curse, drink, smoke, shoot up, have sex before marriage. Just try it out, huh? Try it out. Tell me how God works on your Holy Ghost. How, how, let me know how your Holy Ghost gets activated. Huh? Well, we're going to go to Romans chapter 6 before I close out all the way. Oh, Y'all need this, man. I know this for a fact. Y'all need it. <laughs> I mean, we all need it. Romans chapter 6, verses 15 here through 23. I'm going to read them and close out. So since God's grace has set us free from the law, does this mean we can go on sinning? Of course not. Don't you realize that whatever you choose to obey becomes your master? You can choose sin, which leads to death. The wages of sin is death. Or you can choose to obey God and receive his approval. Thank God, thus says the Lord. Once you were slaves of sin, but now you have obeyed with all your heart the new teaching God has given you. Now you are free from sin, your old master, and you have become slaves to your new master. Righteousness. I speak this way using the illustration of slaves and masters because it is easy to understand. Before you let yourselves be slaves of impurity and lawlessness, which is flooding our streets. Hmm? Amen. Now you must choose to be slaves of righteousness so that you will become holy. In those days, when you were slaves of sin, you weren't concerned with doing what was right and what was the result. It was not good. Since now you are ashamed of the things you used to do. Things that end in eternal doom. But now you are free from the power of sin and have become slaves of God. Now you do things that lead to holiness and result in eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Go to God, everybody. Go to God. You ain't got much more time. I know y'all oh, been preaching that for years. Oh, yeah? Well, look at around you. Look at what's going on. Look at what's going on worldwide. Do your research is all I got to say. Do your research on what's lining up with this biblical prophecy. Do your research on everything. Do your research on the seven-year feast. Do your research on the blood moons and the signs in the sky. Do your research about what CERN Switzerland is doing in it. Do your research on what our top officials are letting slide by right in front of your face. Hallelujah. Glory be to God.
Go to God. Quit making up excuses. Oh, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm going to be like Yoda. Huh? Like Star Wars. I'm be like, do or do not. There is no try. Uh, I'm tired of hearing that. I'm not going to be uh, what we call passive with you people anymore. Huh? I'm going to be stern, aggressive. I'm going to be bold, stern, aggressive, kindness, like David Wilkerson and Carter Collin and the rest of those non-prosperity preachers. Go to God. Quit making up excuses. Quit trying to uh, sit there and say you're, you're hearing from God saying it's okay to smoke weed. Oh, it's okay to do this one more time. Oh, it's okay to do this one. Man, shut up. Sit down. Read your Bible with sound doctrine. Go, if you don't like me, then go follow somebody else that's preaching and speaking and teaching sound doctrine then. Quit being stupid and foolish. Okay? Go get saved. Go get baptized. And if you got to get rededicated, then, then go to a church and get rooted. Get rooted in that holy Bible, that holy word right there. Learn how to what? Pray first. Learn the what? The Bible promises of life. Learn how to do what? Overcoming tough times through Jesus Christ. Cut through the devil. Stop acting like you don't know what you are. Grow a backbone. Go to heaven with the brothers and sisters. How about that? Dear God, thank you for blessing me with this word today. And I hope everybody behind this camera starts learning what they need to stop doing and what they need to start doing, Lord. Please, oh God, touch the hearts of those who hate me, misinterpret me, misunderstand me, and misread me, Lord. Touch everybody in this land. Watch over everybody that needs prayer. Watch over everybody that needs you, Lord. It's time, and they don't have much more time. You showed me many things, and I and I see it coming, oh Lord. Please touch the hearts of those who hate me. Please touch the hearts of those who are lost. Please touch the hearts that need to come to you, O oh Lord. In Jesus Christ, thy name. In the blood of the Lamb, in the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, thy Lord. Glory be to God. Amen. And with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go to God. I love y'all. Hallelujah.